thanks, uh, Sean. And uh, like the others, I'd also like to pay my respect to the the Gumaj and uh, Yolnu people, also uh, Senator Scullion, uh, other important people here, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also, sort of like, like to to acknowledge uh, my colleagues from the Kimberleys and also other people who might be here, because uh, basically I'm going to talk a bit about the East, uh, the empowered communities. Um, uh, concept and the journey we've been on so far. But uh, the Kimberleys have been working a long time in terms of trying to address the issues that uh, Sean just mentioned a minute ago. The, the lady uh, women's group, the Aboriginal women's group in Fitzroy Crossing, for example, leads the country in terms of research, in terms of the fat, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, uh, syndrome disease. Uh, and um, they're sort of finding that uh, at least one to two-thirds of Aboriginal babies in certain parts of uh, the country, especially around the Fitzroy Valley and other parts of the Kimberleys, are born with FASD. 98% of the, the uh, inmates at the Broome Prison are Aboriginal, and um, you know the, st the statistics sort of just go on and on. But the, the empowered community's uh, whole movement, I think, is really about empowering our people uh, for the future, and we've got to start from the family upwards. And in the process, as uh, Michael sort of mentioned earlier, in, in terms of building our people, we're also building the country as well, building Australia. The underlying philosophy that's, uh, that connects the, the eight regions that have, that, that have agreed to the empowered communities uh, philosophy is one is that kids must go to school and be educated, two, uh, you must be in work or in education or training. Three, you pay your rent and look after your home. Four, you commit no crimes. And five, uh, old people and children are kept safe. Um, I think the, the, it's, uh, I sort of see this as a really exciting time for, for us. And, um, you know, if the empowered communities, uh, uh, whole uh, strategy takes off. We could back. We could be looking back uh, 50 years from now and say, look, that was a very defining moment in terms of where we changed our history. Because if you look at the history of the Kimberleys, since uh, 1967, when our people were uh, kicked off the stations in uh, the Kimberleys due to the the introduction of the award wage, it's really we've been at at a loss. We've been sort of basically wandering the, the desert with no sort of uh, direction. And a lot of our people have got back their land, They've get, uh, they're getting mining royalties, and uh, you know, all those things have come our way. We're a lot more sort of financial than we were 40 or 50, uh, 50 years ago. But what we seem to be lacking is personal, uh, personal responsibility. And um, so I think the, um, the uh, what we're going to need to, to really uh, to accept this challenge is strong leadership, and uh, leadership at both the, uh, the family level and the wider uh, regional and national level. The, when you look at the families that actually succeed and uh, are doing the right thing in terms of sending their kids to school, someone gets up at six or seven o'clock in the morning, wakes everybody up, puts the kettle on the, on the stove, and gets the whole family moving. A lot of our families in the Kimberleys have never done that. We've got families there who are three, four, five generations have never ever held a job in that family. They've never experienced the, uh, you know, the, the advantages of having their living in their own home, um, enjoying the benefits that uh, not most of us take for granted. And I think the, uh, some of the challenges we're up against though is that is, uh, from an Aboriginal perspective, is that people are a little bit cautious of where we're coming from. Some people see the enforcing those five norms I've just mentioned as assimilationist. They sort of see us, well, what are you doing? Um, if we go down this path, the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the traditional sort of view of being Aboriginal in the Kimberleys is being that you've got to be poor and you've got to be unemployed. And uh, this, challenge, uh, this strategy is going to challenge all that and say, no, you can be, you can be living in a nice house, you can have your uh, kids going to school, wear nice clothing, and be a proud Aboriginal person. 
because culture, of course, is still very much part of it. So I think part of the journey for us is going to, is going to require uh, redefining who we are. That re redefinition is going to require us to say, and uh, you know, starting from our cultural leaders downwards, need to stand up and say, we have to walk, walk in two worlds. It's about sort of living in 21st century Australia. It's also about taking responsibility. It's also about getting your, your kids educated, having a nice house, and, uh, and uh, living the dream that all other Australians take for granted. But a lot of our people see that very threatening. I was at a meeting there once uh, one day when I was talking about this stuff and, and this lady stood up and said, but we're gonna, I'm gonna have to leave some of my people behind. And she does. And I think that's gonna be the same for all of us. But that happens all around the world. We aren't gonna get a situation where the masses are going to stand up tomorrow and start following us. It's gonna be dependent on individual families who make the choice of this is, this is what I want for my children and for my future. So there is this sort of notion of uh, we're going to leave some of our people behind. But unfortunately, I think that's probably just how it's going to have to be. But you know, the, um, um, when you talk about leadership, there's really only two sorts of leaderships, leadership in my view. There's good leaders and great leaders. Good leaders take their people where they want to go. Great leaders take their people where they don't want to go, but should go. A case in point is someone like Nelson Mandela. After two or three hundred years of uh, racial oppression in South Africa, the average black South African just wanted to get even. Let, you know, now, now that we've got the power and the, and all the, uh, the might on our side, let's go and get even. But Mandela said, no, we've got to build a new country here, and it's about sort of uh, going, going on this journey together. So I think that uh, the challenge for us is that we need sort of great leaders at the family level. And where the difficulty is that we're trying to get people to um, go on a journey uh, which the mum and dad in a lot of cases have never been themselves. So that's a hard, that's a hard ask. And, uh, but I think that uh, with the, uh, the partners that we've got in terms of the government, the corporates and so on, that's, uh, that's the journey we have to make. I think the... Um, the, uh, the biggest challenge we're facing in, the West, in, the, in, in Western Australia is not so much from the Aboriginal people. We're getting more and more people, communities and organisations and towns saying, look, we want to opt into this, but we do, have need, we do need to have government support. I must say that I'm a bit sort of disappointed in the, 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 the level of support I've been getting from the West Australian government in terms of going in this new direction. But um, that's something that we have to embrace. Someone mentioned to me that uh, you know we spent when we spend 1.5 billion dollars in WA every year on Aboriginal affairs, and uh, over the last 40 or 50 years we've basically sort of really haven't closed too many gaps at all. So I think the the challenge before us is to how do we sort of work together, and like I said before, it's about great it's about sort of uh, great leadership, and uh, building up that that momentum. So I want to leave you with a, a quote that uh, I always use to try and inspire my people back uh, in the Kimberleys there, you know, from a family level upwards. And the quote is that uh, if you want to have things you've never had before, you've got to be prepared to do things you've never done before. Thank you.